And walking back to talk to me with the coach, Mike, we made, and as I'm down on the field at U.S. Cellular Field, on my Chicago White Sox with the man, Big Poppy, Boston Red Sox. How are we doing today? We're doing good, man. We're doing good. So I got a ton of youngsters out there, young high school, college ball players with that ambition of playing Major League Baseball. They want to know what it's like from Big Poppy being in the Major Leagues. Well, you know, it's just... It's a great experience, you know. Uh, yeah, the kind of guy that I try to take advantage of every day. You know, we uh, it's, it's not an easy, uh, it's not an easy to look, but uh, if you put a lot of enthusiasm into it and uh, you put a lot of dedication, uh, it will come to you. You know, being a, a career major league and future Hall of Famer, you make it look so easy out on the field hitting those balls out of the ballpark. Now they tell me it's hard to hit major league pitching. How do you make it look so easy? It's not easy though. <laughs> it's not easy. You know, this game is confusing because um, in your best day when you feel real good, you can go off a fire as a hitter or you can, as a pitcher, you can give it up, you know, earlier before anybody thought, you know, but it's, it's a game that uh, you need to try to, uh, you got to try to stay consistent and daily base, you know, and, and try to have more uh, good days than bad days. Well, not, it doesn't even have to be a good day. It's a day that you show everyone that you try to do something, you know, and and, and I think that's, that's what it's all about. You know, I coached college ball and I scouted for five major league teams. And I would always tell my ball players that Whatever you think it takes to get to the big leagues, when you cross over that professional line, you throw it out to one and it starts all over. How do you as a major league deal with all that adversity that major league players have to deal with from time to time? Well, you know, especially in today's day, this game is uh, it's a little bit, uh, things have got out of hands a little bit. And it's because there's a lot of people trying to make money out of this game one way or the other you know and and you have guys that they never play the game telling people how to play the game you have guys that um they analyze the game but they have never played the game either and you have the guys that play the game their whole life but they never get the chances or the opportunity to work with anyone you know and um that's why I think you gotta you gotta watch the game and make your own judgment. You know you gotta okay. This is what I want to do. This is the way I want to be. Let me work for it. And I'm one of the guys that say that you don't need to be a five tool player to play this game for a long time and and begin to be a superstar. You know if you got the number one tool, that will take you to complete the other ones. I think to me the number one tool is your mind. If you got your mind set and you tell yourself every day what you want to do, every time you cross this line, I think your mentality will make things happen. You know, you're a career major leaguer. Longevity has been on your side in this game. When you look back, what's your one unforgettable experience as a major league ball player that you look back mm. and you just laugh about? Um, got to be when I first got called up to the big league, I wasn't expecting it, you know. I was, that year I started I start playing uh, A-ball. Mm -hmm. Then I got moved up to double-A, triple-A, and then next thing I know, I'm playing, uh, I'm in the big league, you know. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine told me, hey, the way you hit the ball, you definitely got to be in the big league one day. And I was like, yeah, all right, you know, whatever. <laughs> but and then... I got called up, and actually was here in Chicago at Wrigley Field. That was when I got my first bat, and uh, it was amazing, you know, the, the atmosphere around here, how everything was, and, and, and uh, me keep on telling myself, you know what, man, if this is where God want me to be, I'm going to work myself. Um, I'm going to work hard to, to maintain myself up at this level, because getting to this level is it's not a hard thing to do. Maintain yourself at this level. That's that's the worst part about it. And and not the man. And since that time, I got 12 years here. You know, I've been I've been doing it for a while, and everything's going good. But I think you know, 
to me the one one of the most important thing is you know you gotta keep yourself under control and, and try to do uh, good things not only on the field off the field the way people when you start playing the game they won't just remember you as, as the one guy that throw the baseball the one guy that hit the baseball they can they can say good things about you who was the one major league player that had the most influence on, on your major league career? I have to be Kirby Pocket. Yeah, Kirby. That's why um, when I first, very time, the first time ever I watched, I sit down to watch a baseball game. It was a, a World Series in between um, the Twins and uh, I think it was the Braves. The when uh, Kirby Pocket made that that jumping over the fans cash back there and I asked my pop, hey pop, who's that guy? And then my pop started raking things down. I was only like 10 years old. Uh -huh. And now, uh, the next thing I know when I first, uh, when I get traded, I was with Seattle. Seattle was the first team, the Mariners. Mm -hmm. It was the first team that ever uh, uh, signed me as a free agent. And then I got traded to the Twins and when I'm walking into the clubhouse for the spring training, big league camp, First guy I bumped into was Kirby Pocket, you know. That was uh, one of the. So I'm sure y'all had a few nights out of the town together. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That was my man, man. Rest in peace. He was, he was the best. Actually, that's why I wear my number 34 because of him. Okay. He, he was, he was really good to me. He was a, he was the guy that I, he, he tried to make things fun. I wish I could play with him, you know. It was way before my time, but. He began to be vice president and, and work in the front office for the Twins, and, and, and he would pull me to the side and let me know how things work. You know, that was great. Just one last question. I know you got to get ready for the game. When your playing days is over and the career of Big Poppy is over, how do you want baseball to remember you? Well, I think uh, I want to be remembered as the guy that I never forgot where he came from. You know, it's the guy that uh, he was probably a good player, but on top of that, he was better as a person. You know, I think that would be a really good uh, way to look at things. And it's because I had children that they loved the game, you know, and and. Sometimes, without knowing, you you close those doors for those kids when they when they want to develop and begin to be somebody in life, you know. And it's because you might make a mistake when you were at the point where they want to be. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I I always you know I'm curious about uh, in life, you know. Make sure my kids, they everybody when they see the last name on the back, they be like, hey, you Pat, man. I was a good player, but as a person, he was even better. And I never forgot about that. Coach, taking you behind the scenes with Big Poppy. Appreciate it. You got it, man. All right.